Well, at least, at least Bernie Sanders won in Michigan, and that shows that there's some mm, critical thought going on out there in the U.S. And um, still, it's a long way to the convention for the two-party system, and there's a lot that can happen in between. However, I can't help but um, being sort of overwhelmed by this, uh, you know, information, I guess, although we won't even call it information, it, you know, we'll say rumor, speculation, conjecture, you know, that um, suspicion that there's something else going on within our, not only our politics, which is obvious, but even our electoral politics. I'm talking about this, um, this story I became aware of, this, um, I guess, yeah, story I became aware of several, a couple few years ago. And, and you've heard stories, one has, people have heard stories right along that, uh, you know, the, the, the whole presidential election is contrived, you know, that um, anything from bloodlines being relevant in uh, who becomes the next president, you know, that they're all related and all this kind of thing to any various variations of this sort of conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theories which sometimes wind up being true as well, though. You can't entirely rule out conspiracy theories because some of them are actually um, conspiracy facts. Anyway, what I'm talking about now is this idea that there's this senator called Ben Sass from Nebraska. And there are those who allege that he had told friends and acquaintances, even people that he was introducing himself to. In fact, the story goes that he would introduce himself as the 45th president of the United States. And the implication is that it wasn't even um, introduced as I'm going to be the 45th president. It was more like I am the 45th president. I filed this away under conspiracy theories and, and um, the weeks and um, months and such went by and I didn't give it much thought. Because you don't hear anything about Ben Sass, you hear about Donald Trump, you hear about Hillary Clinton, you hear a little bit about Ted Cruz, maybe um, the outside chance that Bernie Sanders will still be the, the nominee on the side of the, the Democratic Party. But um, as the cacophony in the media started to grow over the sort of breakup, if, if, if not uh, total dissolution of the, of the Republican Party. That's what people in the mainstream are uh, pontificating about, not just me, mainstream re reporters, because of Trump. Trump is a wrecking ball, as other people have said, wrecking the, Dem the Republican Party. Many of us would say that's to the good, to the good, but hold on. We see that uh, all of a sudden this person, Ben Sass, is leading the revolt against the Trump, you know, wing of the Republican Party. And then the next thing that happens is there is a Twitter. It's always a Twitter, like the Arab Spring or, or whatever, any kind of color revolution. It always is like a Twitter thing. You know, <laughs> and I'll leave that alone. But but so we get this idea that uh, people want to draft Ben Sass as the candidate for a third party to run in 2016 in the general election. And now we have that idea out there. So it makes me even more suspicious. We'll see what really happens. And we'll see if, um, indeed, the 45th president of the United States has been selected 
15, 20 years ahead of time. We'll see if that's the case. And if it is, you know, that just reconfirms the, I guess, the rigged nature of political reality for, for many of us. On the other hand, just because the elite plan things doesn't mean that they're going to be successful. I don't think they are successful with everything that they plan. And there's, and there's evidence for that that would take too long for me to discuss in a, in a short video, what I hope to be a short video, like this. So I just throw, thought I'd throw that out there. Watch out for a third party with uh, Ben Sass as the candidate. And know that that's something that potentially, allegedly, could have been in the works long before 2015, 16. Kind of uh, frightening to consider the prospect that even on the most uh, elementary level, there's really no democracy. In the sense that even your vote really doesn't count, at least for the higher office of uh, the presidency. You know, maybe your vote for like mayor or school board or maybe even House and Senate representatives, Senator and House of Representatives, maybe they still count. I don't know to what extent that's true or not true, or to what extent it's true in the case of president or not. The only other thing in order to, to keep this video shorter rather than longer <clears throat> the only other thing I wanted to talk about is this idea. There's a, a YouTube channel called Morris108, and I think that he often has interesting things to say. One theory that he truly believes is that most of the wars and um, calamities as such that are being um, hoisted upon us are in order to bring about migration, immigration, emigration, migration in the world. And I'm starting to more and more believe that that is a common thread in the thinking of the elite. I mean, file this under conspiracy theory if you want. But when I see how back in the 2000s there was a big movement to have... Um, you know, people wanted to leave America because of the Bush presidency. And, and I think a number, I don't know how great the number was, but a number, a substantial number of people actually did go to Canada, for instance. And now there's another movement that if Trump wins to cause uh, out-migration to Canada from the U.S., that's just a small sort of microcosm of this idea he would more tie it to the wars, and you certainly see that. I mean, in Syria, it has caused a whole wave of migration out of Syria, and to a lesser extent, the, the war in Iraq. I think a lesser extent, we don't hear about it as much in the media. Migration out of Iraq, the, the, Gulf, the second Gulf War, and um, what they call the second Gulf War, and the aftermath of this. You got to wonder how much this plays into the fact that, you know, many of the Republicans are actually against a lot of the more hardline border controls. I'm not arguing for more hardline border controls. I'm not one of those, I'm not one to argue for that at all. But what I'm saying is it's odd that some of these um, Republicans in the establishment are arguing against that. Well, what does that allow? That allows immigration from the countries that we've wrecked in Latin America, and, and believe me, I believe it's the United States that has been doing a lot of the wrecking, the policy of America. I don't believe this nonsense that somehow capitalism is lifting people out of poverty in um, third world countries, and <laughs> that's the reason we promote it. No. Well, that causes immigration into the United States from the south of the border of the U.S. So I think there's a lot to um, lend uh, some credibility to this, um, to this theory. All right, I'll leave it there. That's been long enough. And that's enough of my two cents for today.